Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today I'm talking about soul posture. I have looked online and there's not a whole lot about this, although I did find a quote from Victor Hugo. He was a French writer. He wrote Les Miserables and back in the 1800s. But anyway, so he said, there are thoughts which are prayers. There are moments when whatever the posture of the body, the soul is on its knees. And so that is kind of what I'm talking about today. Soul posture, not about your physical posture on the outside, which is important, but about the inner posture of the soul, which of course is all about the heart, right? So illustrating that our outer and inner posture can be very different. Okay, on the outside, we could be standing up tall with our hands on our hips, looking confident, while on the inside, we can be bowed down to the Lord. Okay, so I'm talking about the posture on the inner, in the inner being, on the, you know, in your soul, the posture on the inside. Okay, and I have some questions to ask. The Lord has taught me all this years ago, and I've been, it's been on my heart to share this. I just didn't know when, but in yesterday in the service, it was very clear that I had to do it today. So, so th some questions are, how can you fall down when you're bowed down? And how can you fall when you are prostrate? Okay, with these soul postures of being bowed down or being prostrate, you cannot fall. And he taught me that because I was so concerned about falling because I was so vulnerable in all these different ways. And so he just taught me that when you're bowed down or prostrate, it's impossible to fall. Okay, so I've had to learn humility over time because naturally I'm very impatient, very independent due to my temperament and my, especially my upbringing. So the gentleness and the humility of the Lord has helped me has really healed me to a great degree. And, you know, he talks about this in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, where he says, I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart. And when you walk with him, he rubs off on you. Okay, so let's talk about soul posture. The soul posture of someone who is bowed down on the inside or prostrate on the inside is called humility. All right, I want you to think about that. So it's like the man who couldn't be angry at the traffic jam as he drove home from building his own coffin. He couldn't be angry at the traffic when he was driving home from building his own coffin. See, that's humility. <laughs> I love that. So also when the brevity of the, the reality of the brevity of this life hits you, you know, you realize that you really are a vapor and you're just here for a passing moment, you fall down in submission in your humility to the Lord. When you realize the nothingness that will be if you try to live your own life, you fall down in humility and submission before the Lord. When the reality of the unspeakable riches in Christ hits you, you want to fall down in submission because that's what you want when you arrive home. When you live your life from the perspective of your deathbed, you make different decisions than you would if you lived from the perspective of your own ideas and what you think and what you want and what you think you need to have, and what you think you need to do. So again, this posture of being bowed down on the inside is called humility, and it takes time to get comfortable in that uh, inner posture. But over time, you can do this. And the more you practice this, the more you'll stay in the yoke. And you can do it enough to where you can stay in the yoke 24-7 and that's just your home and you don't ever want to leave. And in this soul posture, you choose to bow down on the inside. You choose to prostrate yourself on the inside. You're saying, you're God. I'm not, obviously. You are everything. 
I'm nothing without you. I trust you to live your life through me and do your will through me. I don't want painful regrets on my deathbed for things that I knew better, but I just thought I had to have at the time. Please change my heart from being independent to being dependent on you. Change my heart from living from my view of life to living from your view of life, your perspective. Give me your heart, your eyes, your words, and your desires, Lord. That's your prayer when you assume this type of inner posture. So if you want, you can practice this kind of inner posture physically to kind of give yourself the, um, the feel of it. So uh, what you could do is you could go and just bow down on the floor, wherever you are. Bow down on your knees and let your head fall forward and just bow down everything that you are. Okay, okay. so do that for a while and get comfortable in that posture. Feel it. Feel how it feels. Okay, then after a little while when you're ready, let your body get up, stand up, while your soul stays bowed down. And just practice it, thinking about it for a few minutes every now and then. And then let the Holy Spirit lead you, as he does, in progressing in this. It's not a stressful thing. It's not a to-do list. It's nothing, no pressure. It's just an idea. Okay, just an idea. So also what you could do is lie down completely prostrate on the floor, like with every part of your body in the front flat on the floor. Okay, you can do that. And then relax in that position and feel the lowliness of that position and feel your dependence on the Lord in that position. That's that's pretty much full surrender, don't you think? Okay, so you get comfortable as you can in that position. Then let your body get up while your soul stays in that position. Okay, and then you can kind of remember it throughout the day. Kind of remember it and think about it before you go to bed at night, okay? It's kind of like dog training. I have two dogs now that are one each of two of my daughters that I'm keeping for a little while. And so I train them because I just like to train dogs. And so you place a treat in front of the dog when he's hungry. And so he has to sit and wait until you give the signal for him to eat the treat. And so the point is that dogs love to please people. They love to please their owner. And so he's so focused on pleasing me that he foregoes his hunger and he waits till I give him the signal because he wants my permission before he eats because he wants to be in agreement with me and he wants me to say, good boy, good girl. He wants that approval. He wants that connection. He wants that agreement, see? And so we're kind of like dogs in training, if you will, because we're getting to the place where we want the Lord's connection and approval and agreement more than we want all of these things down here, you know? So this process does take time, and it all depends on how important you think it is and how much you want it. It makes life so easy. So another uh, caveat here, though, is to um, allow all and any emotions that come up inside you during this time that want to have a temper tantrum and say, no, I can't do this because of this or that or all these thing, memories or this thing or this person or, you know, whatever the situation is. Let those emotions come up over time and purge out of you because they will interfere with the process and they will be little indicators of idolatry and you can just lay it down. If you have to lay it down over and over again, just keep doing it and the Lord will show you, um, you know, in your situation, what would be best for you. So I don't know why, but the Lord is just having me share this um, idea about soul posture. You know how little kids say, I'm standing or I'm sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. So you can uh, reverse that and you can be um, standing up on the outside and be sitting down or bowed down on the inside. 
So it doesn't mean you lose your personality. It doesn't mean you can never talk. It doesn't mean that um, anything bad. It's just um, you're getting out of the way and you're letting the Lord lead your life. You're letting the Lord lead you in everything. It takes all the pressure off of you. It helps you not to have to be stressed. Uh, it makes relationships so much easier. And this is really a place of rest, uh, really the Sabbath rest, if you will, uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he promises that he will give us rest. And in Psalm 23, he says um, you know, he makes us lie down in green pastures and sheep do not lie down and you can't make them lie down you can wrestle them down but they'll stand up again the only time they will lie down is when they know for sure there are no enemies around no wolves or bears or whatever coyotes around and when that shepherd is there the lord is my shepherd i shall not want that comes first. Then he makes me lie down in green pastures. That's the only way they'll lie down in green pastures is if they know the shepherd is there because they're perfectly safe and they can rest. See? And, and that he's in charge of everything. He's going to lead them to the still waters. He's going to knock out the enemies if they come. He's going to do everything. See? So they can rest. Just listen and follow. Okay? So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this is helpful, and I'll see you next time.